Uh, we're talking about NAT, NAT address translation. Um, corporations probably have to learn this as often because you guys know your firewalls really well. Resellers are going to die on NATing every day they go out to a site. And I can guarantee you, even with Cis fancy Cisco routers, unless you've got a guy from Cisco trained, this is going to be something that's going to make you crazy periodically. And it's all about RTP packets when you have an RTP stream running through the server. It's jumping all over from 10,000 to 20,000, all in the same um, a set of packets for one media stream. Um, this is something that we have had many service calls on things that have absolutely nothing to do with the PBX and have everything to do with the local area network. We, we don't own the network. We don't own the client's network. And many times the main focus of the problem is the router. And, you know, especially with smaller clients, they use a residential router. And you guys are trying to figure out why your phones aren't configured. I mean, there's no option 66 anywhere for the phones to find what it's home. If you're going to be doing NATI, you always have to fill out the SIP underscore NAT dot config. In the next release, that goes away because Bill says no more evil CLI. And so we're working really hard in the next release to get rid of all the things you're going to be doing in the first lab of configuring Linux, which is, this is part of ACID, that's actually a, uh, to, t to make sure Linux, under make sure that ACID understands who the real person is, and to make sure the header of the packet is labeled properly, so we know how to send it back out again. So, in the slash etc slash asterisk directory, there's a file called sip underscore nat dot com. And everything in at slash etc slash asterisk is dot com. That's where asterisk is fully configured. You see that wonderful GUI that's got free PBX, it's got complete PBX wrapped around it, and that's just a pretty wrapper. At the end of the day, asterisk is a command line configuration file system. And so everything that we do in the GUI eventually generates those comp files. So in the, in the, um, the other thing I need to warn you about about SIP is don't let your routers do the smart things they say they do to fix SIP traffic. Every router has options for, oh, it's ACL SIP or I mean, some funny, funny acronym they've got. But basically it says, this will make your SIP work better. It's basically what it is. Always turn it off. I don't care if you've got Barracudas, I don't care if you've got Sonic Walls, I don't care if you've got um, the command to make Cisco work is about this long. All it is turning off all their code they wrote to help SIP traffic. That's the first thing you have to do. Here, we're doing basically the same thing, but we're making sure that if we see a local address, uh, actually, if we see an external IP address, we're fixing the header area so it'll work properly, and oh, we're telling it to send a packet out once in a while and keep the circuit alive so the router doesn't think that that's no longer used and just shuts it down on us. So, first thing is NAT equals yes. If you set NAT equals yes and you have, this won't hurt if you're not doing NAT. This is only going to fix header where it sees that it has to route to the outside world and it sees a local area network for your server in there. You must define your external IP number for the PBX. You must define all your local nets, routed or not routed. Say you have a, here we have a 10.0.0.0, we have a big class B, and oh by the way, you also have a 192.168.0.1 that runs the service department that you have a static route to. Even though it's a static route, it is a local network. We don't do NAT translations to get to it. All we do is routing. And so you have local NAT, this, the next line down will be local NAT equals 192.168.0.1.255.255.255.0. That way, the SIP software inside the asterisk system knows where all the local networks are so it won't mess with those packets and it will only mess with packets that it knows it has to go to the outside world, and it goes in and fixes the header so that the NAT team on the router will light it. So, and today, that's done in the command line. It's done the one time when you set the system up, or it's done more than one time if you happen to move the public IP of your server. 
But if you move the public IP of your server and don't update this, yeah, I can guarantee you audio both directions. Oh, so good.